My colleagues and I recently conducted a prospective longitudinal multicenter cohort study of patients with mild traumatic brain injury, also known as mild TBI. The takeaway message of our study uh, was that post-traumatic headache is a common and in some cases persistent sequelae of mild traumatic brain injury. About 60% of patients with mild TBI experience acute post-traumatic headache at two weeks post-injury. And of these, 29% uh, continue to have persistent headache even after one year. So my name is Hakan Ashina. I'm a medical doctor and research fellow at Harvard Medical School, the Copenhagen University Hospital. The article is titled Prevalence of and Risk Factors for Post-Traumatic Headache in Civilians Patients After Mild Traumatic Brain Injury, a tried tbi study. The article is published in Mayo Clinic Proceedings, and my colleagues and I invite you to read it. So post-traumatic headache is a disabling neurologic disorder that can most often be attributed to mild traumatic brain injury. If the headache remits within three months of its onset, then it's classified as acute post-traumatic headache. On the other hand, if the headache persists beyond three months, we classify it as persistent post-traumatic headache. For a long period of time, it was kind of assumed that this was a psychological disorder, right? Uh, and then we conducted, you know, a series of studies, including this one, showing that, you know, a significant proportion of patients has these symptoms even after one year. And then in Denmark, you can't do it in the U.S., so I can't do it in Boston, but we can do uh, experimental studies in which we actually administer specific substances that uh, are pain-inducing. So if you give these pain-inducing substances to healthy people, healthy individuals, free of headache, they develop no headache. If you give them to post-traumatic headache patients, they develop their usual uh, post-traumatic headache. And it's the same for people with migraine. Uh, so if you give it to people uh, who suffer from migraine, well, then they'll develop a migraine attack. So this kind of proved that, okay, this is a neurobiological uh, disease. Uh, and this study is also important uh, because, we, you know, some people said, well, if you take orthopedic trauma patients, you know, who maybe, I don't know, uh, hurt their ankle or their knee, they would have, maybe they will also develop post-traumatic headache uh, in the same, you know, rate, at the same rate uh, as people with a head injury. Uh, and our study actually also found that, well, post-traumatic headache is, as we assume, much more prevalent in people with head injury and people who, you know, hurt their ankles or their knees or whatever. Um, so I think in that sense, it's kind of important, especially with all the focus on concussion, especially in the U.S., you know, with the military service members and also with the, the American uh, football players uh, in the NFL, right? Because these headaches are usually chronic, and some patients experience them from the moment they wake up to the moment they go to sleep. In our study, we enrolled about 1,600 patients uh, with mild traumatic brain injury who were evaluated in the emergency department within 24 hours of their head injury. We found that acute post-traumatic headache was reported by 60% of patients uh, at two weeks post-injury. Furthermore, 29% of patients with acute post-traumatic headache continued to experience persistent post-traumatic headache even after one year. Two key risk factors associated with acute as well as persistent post-traumatic headache included female sex and self-reported migraine, so self-reported history of migraine. So our findings are highly relevant to clinical practice as they highlight the need for healthcare professionals to recognize and address post-traumatic headache in individuals who have sustained a mild traumatic brain injury. Understanding the risk factors associated with post-traumatic headache can assist in identifying patients who are at a higher risk of experiencing persistent headaches. By implementing appropriate management strategies and providing early interventions, clinicians can likely alleviate the burden of post-traumatic headache and improve patient outcomes. For patients, uh, on the other hand, our findings emphasize that post-traumatic headache is a common sequelae of mild traumatic brain injury. It also reassures them that their symptoms are valid and not uncommon. In addition, patients should be aware that persistent headaches can occur 
even after one year, highlighting the importance of seeking appropriate medical care to alleviate their symptoms and improve their quality of life. The next step for this uh, line of research involves further investigation into the disease burden attributed to post-traumatic headache and the identification of additional risk factors. It would be valuable to explore whether the identification uh, of these risk factors in clinical practice warrants more active follow-up and timely therapeutic interventions to prevent persistent post-traumatic headache. In addition, ongoing research could focus on developing targeted interventions and treatment approaches specifically tailored to this patient population. Thank you for your attention. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter more information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.